Snake molesting at its finest. Yes, at the same sort of time I was um, obviously needed to pay the bills, so I thought I'd fall back on, on one of my old um, talents, if I can call it that, um, which, was, which was the art. Um, I'd sold out actually at my end of year show um, at university, um, so I began uh, painting and, and drawing again. Um, it, they were always sort of based on either British wildlife or the travels I'd made. Um, that's where I had, obviously, the reference material from. Um, thankfully, some people seem to like what I do, and I got offered to come to shows such as things at the NEC and things like that, and paint in front of large um, audiences, which was, which was um, a great honour, really. Um, the shows actually continue to be sort of the lifeblood of what I do um, as, a, as a wildlife artist, um, and I think they're probably the way forward um, for me. But, I was also lucky enough to, um, there's the NEC show, one or a couple of them. Um, so I was painting quite large pieces. In fact, this, um, the rhino up there is a northern white rhino as opposed to a southern white rhino. Uh, and that was a photo supplied by me at the bottom right there by uh, Mark Cowardian, um, who is, of course, uh, one of the, is he vice president or vice president for WWT? So um, that was very nice of him to get involved. Um, yes, so. Uh, at one of these shows, I think it was at this one on the bottom right, uh, at the NEC again, um, someone from the BBC approached me and asked if I'd be interested in uh, doing a, a series called, or being part of a series, sorry, called Wild About Art, um, which showcases the best of British wildlife with uh, the best of British art. I said that in tongue in cheek. Um, and I had a, a wonderful few weeks sort of filming, uh, first up on Sky, with um, otter sort of territory up there. Um, and then down in Dorset when the otters failed to show up uh, on bats. Um, so stay, stay tuned if you like that sort of thing because it's, uh, it's coming out. Well, if they say they keep saying shortly, but they have been saying that for about three months. So we'll see. But it should be by the end of the year. It's called Wild About Art. It's really good for, for children. It's um, a children's based thing on CBBC. So uh, that should be a good one. Um, I'm also hoping to start a, a new series of wildlife films, uh, produced, filmed, and, and present, presented by myself. Um, in the coming few weeks for ITV uh, Central, it will be. Um, and that hasn't been 100% confirmed yet, but the point of me mentioning it is, again, I asked if they would like some films, and they said, yes, please. And it's kind of that, it was kind of that simple, really, and I just wanted to let people know that there are opportunities out there if you wanted to do that sort of thing, writing or, or, or art or, um, or the films. I just still can't believe that no one's done it. But um, it's, it's lovely, it's, you, there's plenty of opportunities. Um, I'd like to end with a, a summing up of, of what I feel uh, wildlife media, so art and writing and film, um, can, can do for natural history in general. Um, because, of course, that's by far the, far the most important point, the conservation of the species on this planet. Taking, for example, uh, wildlife filmmaking, those programmes can tell us and teach us um, not just about individual animals, but about the world as a whole. And that should be of interest not only to animal lovers, not only to naturalists, 
but to scientists, to teachers, to politicians, um, to anthropologists, historians, religious leaders, for example, to, to name but a few. Um, on a small local scale, I, was, I have been lucky enough to go to some wonderful places and see some wonderful things, not least here at the BBC, up on Sky, and down on Brownsea Island in Dorset. Um, but these places are, of course, as we all know, under threat. Um, they're being encircled by humanity. Occasionally it works, like here at the WWT, uh, London. Um, but habitats are being enveloped by man and his cities at, as we all know, an, an incredibly alarming rate. Natural history films shine a light on, natural history films, natural history media, shine a light on uh, what can, has, and will be lost if we don't change our societies and our politics. Whilst making it clear, of course, that there are still vast tracts of land um, where there will be new species found, undoubtedly, um, and yet to be discovered. However, they also shine... Um, sorry, sorry, uh, no. As all of us know here today, um, we can make a difference in our own individual ways. Um, some people tend to isolate themselves from the natural world, tend to not be interested in uh, conservation and ecology. Um, but we know they are wrong because we know we can all make a difference. Um, a lot of Westerners, uh, in particular, tend to care only about themselves and their pockets and their wallets. Um, but we and they are not separate from the wildlife on this planet. Very important point. We are not only, as I believe, um, distantly related to every species out there, um, but we are subject to the same laws of the universe as they are. Uh, we cannot afford to lose the other species and their inhabitants of this earth. And it's natural history films, I believe, um, and books and articles and art to some degree with the um, obvious um, example of David Shepherd. Um, who, that publicise the sort of glorious nature, if you like, the rich nature, the rich colours um, on this planet. Um, population is now the biggest threat to that. Um, I hope I'm right in saying that to make and to support natural history films and media is to show um, that you show your own love and passion uh, for the nature, for the wildlife on this planet, um, and, and that then enables others to uh, enjoy it in turn. But more powerfully than that, it's also it's an argument for um, global interconnected politics, education, female emancipation and literacy, and an argument for the importance of inspiration through the natural world, as indeed the aim is here at the WWT. I'd like to just finish um, with a few words far greater than my own, not to mention more eloquently put, I'm sure. Um, although, as I'm sure you'll all agree, agree here today, they ring true for every one of us. When asked why he made his films and wrote his books, Sir David Attenborough replied, because I know of no pleasure deeper than that that comes from contemplating the natural world and trying to understand it. Thank you very much. Thank you.